is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then, the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Weird News Podcast, brought to you by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Ariane, and with me, I have Sarah and Heidi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Wow, we synced up. That was very, yes, stere- in stereo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can make a band. <laughs> oh, jeez. Du- it would be two, a duet. Oh, yeah. Who would be? No, anyway, moving on. <laughs> no, it could be a band if you were in it. I mean, okay. Yeah, there we go. A <laughs> I, podcast band. I got the invite. Yay. <laughs> okay. Our first topic, we are talking about a pair of shoes that cost $17 million. $17 million. And then you have to like wear them around, which I, I feel like I that's just, yeah, right. exactly. That's endangering your investment. But then what's the point of, you know, okay, why? I, just, I yep. don't even, I don't even want to know. <laughs> exactly. But I want to know. <laughs> so two companies, um, the, I, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, but it's Jada Dubai and Passion Jewelers got together and decided to make heels for women with that basically are real life bedazzled. So um, these heels are gold stilettos um, around the the part where you put your foot in the opening. Mm-hmm. They're small studded diamonds. And then on the on the top of the foot is a large, I don't know what kind of carat diamond. But they said apparently the shoe has over 100 carats of flawless diamonds set in white gold. Wow. I want to say who would wear these, but I'm sure there are people out there who would wear these. And But I would just be terrified. I would I, be so scared. Somebody would just mug me and steal yep. my shoes. Yes. Yep. Or like, what if one of those gems falls out? Why and then you, it's, yeah. <laughs> be following around the person waiting for the big diamond to fall <laughs> yeah, down. Yeah. <laughs> also like encrusted around like where you put your foot. Like, is that comfortable? I don't know. I feel like that would kind of hurt a little it, bit. Yeah. It was on the outside. So kind of just like the rim okay. a bit. Okay. More okay. on the toe box. Yeah, not like any chafing going on. No, <laughs> no, I wouldn't wear them. I would. I'm in the same boat as Sarah and Heidi. I I would be so scared. I, you know what? Wasn't I, there an episode of Sex in the City where he where the guy stole her Jimmy Choo's? I I haven't seen a lot of Sex in the City but shows. I, I, I mean, I that sounds like an episode. I, yeah. I could have just made that up, but I feel <laughs> I think that maybe was one of the plot lines. Yeah, nope, that's very believable if it is. <laughs> <laughs> so these are like the most expensive shoes ever. Like ever. Yeah. Did they make more than one pair or are they no. special made? Or? There's only one pair. Um, and you know what? I didn't even see what size they were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the, the company, the two companies want to make more with like rubies and emeralds and wow. other sapphires, stuff like that. Can yeah. you um, commission them, do you think? Or do they just make them and then just put them out there? Somebody, yeah. Want, yeah. I don't know. They're in a... yeah. I know they're selling them inside of a seven-star hotel in Dubai. I oh. didn't even know there was such thing as yeah, a seven-star. Seven seven star? Star? Yeah. Wow, it's like five and then yeah. extra. It's so much better than... I don't know. Yeah, wow. I too. think it... That's what I was wondering. I'm like, how do you <laughs> Yeah, get what's the your other competition for other seven-star hotels? They're all fancy, apparently, in Dubai. I yeah, would yeah, imagine. They yeah, are. I mean, it's yeah. Dubai. I've, I've only heard crazy yeah. excess stories. About I know. Dubai. I've seen pictures, and it looks amazing. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, that would make sense. The shoes are made in Dubai. You probably have someone who would buy them in Dubai, right? Because yeah. apparently, rich billionaires live there, right? Also, I mean, then they can make the real like ruby slippers. Yeah. yeah. If someone's oh. like really into that. <laughs> but then, like when you click them together, wouldn't it just damage the rubies? Yeah, it might. Yeah. yeah, you would. You have to be a really Don't. careful walker don't click yeah i'm i i love shoes and i have <laughs> worn you know I, I i love shoes i love heels i i can walk in heels most of the time um but 
I don't buy expensive shoes because I like to have lots of pairs of shoes. Right. And then, mm-hmm. you know, I'll buy expensive shoes for the ones that I need art support and stuff on. Exactly. I'll spend more money. But just for my, my cute, silly, floofy shoes, I'll buy less expensive shoes because I'm terrible on them. Yes. I'm always, like, oh. smacking them against each other so they have oh, that, yeah, that, for that, sure. that scuff right. mark. And, and then wouldn't you, you know, when you're, like, walking in heels and sometimes you do, like, that... Sly ankle rolling. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And you're just knocking diamonds off into yeah. the street. Exactly. Oh, I'd be so scared. And then just, I mean, how much of the value would go down after you wore them even just once? Just once. And oh, yeah. Do, do you think they come with a security team? I hope so. <laughs> that follows you around just in case a diamond does well, maybe, fall off. Maybe you're like rich enough where you just have someone who goes in front of you and lays out like a carpet. You know, oh, it just oh, yeah, gets like unrolled right. that you just walk on wherever you go. Yeah. I was thinking about the episode we did. Was that weird news last or was that so? Which one did we do? The uncle. Oh, yeah, that was last time. Okay. So that was weird news. So yes. it was this podcast. Yes. You'd have to hire an uncle as security. Yeah. Or something. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh my yeah. So when I when I seen this story I was like, first, who has seventeen million dollars for shoes? Right. Because right. they're I'm sure there's, you know, other things better things to spend seventeen million dollars on. I don't know. Oh, for it's sure. Personal opinion. Yeah. <laughs> for me, yeah. Other yeah. people apparently don't think so. Right. But then sh- shoes. Like Right. I don't know. Right. They're they're pretty cute. They're pretty cute. I like heels. I'm a fan of heels. They, they, they're pretty high, too. I, they looked at least six inches. Mm. Wow. I'm not even lie. Mm-hmm. Did also, they have a, a platform, at least, so that you're not? No. Wow. Oh, Yeah, there wow. wasn't a platform. Yeah, they were, like, six-inch stilettos. Oh, wow. I was, like, super cute. I personally am not a fan of gold. I like white gold, platinum, mm-hmm. silver, or something like that. So I would never yeah. wear them. Yeah, for sure. But I I don't know. That I mean, was just a like, crazy story. What do you what do you match with that those shoes? You know, like, what is your outfit to go with that? Like, <laughs> nothing compares. Gold and diamonds are a neutral. Right. That, was, <laughs> that was one of the jokes on Twitter, actually, that it was on. Because apparently um, Victoria's Secret did a gold uh, bra that was, what is it, outlined with diamonds? Oh, oh wow. So it's like, oh, Jeez. so I'll wear my $17 million shoes with my $15 million bra. Yeah. I, yeah. Got, <laughs> wow. I was like, oh, no. I mean, you'd so be matchy-matchy. Yeah. I I don't know. I don't. What? I guess gold goes with everything, though. From what I hear, I guess. But why would okay? The why would you put diamonds on a bra? No, I guess not. No one's gonna see it. But most of the time, <laughs> your bra's under your shirt if you're a normal person. Yeah. I mean, and then in a, oh. in the sense that it might be seen, aren't those just ripped off anyway? Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah that's my yeah. problem with lingerie. Anyway, but that's a whole different topic. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just different from, podcast. Never mind. Exactly. But I thought that was just ridiculous. Nobody wants to spend. Seven, they don't have any buyers from what they said, but there are people that they know are willing to bid on them. So they built it like a spec house. Yeah. Wow. Just wow. in the center of the seven, seven star hotel, because that's what we all do. I don't know. I thought that was crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Also, of all the clothing to have covered in diamonds, shoes are for sure the most risky. I because would they're think on so. the ground. <laughs> You're walking yeah. in them. Yeah. I would think so. I mean, a bracelet. Do, do, stick right. with the yeah. basics. Why shoes? Don't right. don't expand Go with the traditional. Shoes. Right. But good luck to Jada Dubai and Passion Jewelers on their upcoming ventures of, you know, bedazzled shoes. Mm-hmm. Good luck. I won't buy it. Good any. luck to whoever buys them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go on to our next topic, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, there's balloon art competitions. Have you guys ever heard of them? Ooh, no. Oh, I'm not surprised, actually. I mean, I, I've never really heard of them, but now that you say it, I'm like, of course yeah. there is. They're, the ones that I saw, the pictures, the article that I read was awesome. So this last competition was held in San Diego, hmm. and there were um, how many teams? Apparently a bunch of teams throughout the world. This, this happens every two years, um, and... Compet- uh, teams throughout the world fly in and they are like they consider themselves professional balloon artists mm-hmm. not like just at a you know kid's birthday party or whatever <laughs> right but they so what it is is they get their team together they have an idea of what they want to build and then when they get there um this this past one a company called pioneer balloon company provided all of the balloons mm-hmm. that each that all the team needed all the teams needed (laughs) they provided over a million and a half balloons for all these you know sculpture balloon sculptures or is this like you take 
a normal, kind of like a normal round balloon, and then you like tie them together. No, it's those like it's long, those long ones. ones. Oh. Yeah, but I guess they have like different kind of because they there were some that had the round balloons in, incorporated in their sculptures. I, mm-hmm. I suppose if it's a sculpture and you're using, you know, different shapes, it's not just yeah. like you make a, like you said, at a kid's birthday party, you just mm-hmm. take the long one and make a giraffe. But you're probably right. much more complicated. Oh, yeah. But they do this for like ice sculptures and... Um, like sand castles? Sand castles. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it, I guess it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it was just the next stage in stage competitions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> balloons. No, it was pretty cool though because... They were saying, so, oh, when you, when you have your idea and you go and, you know, sign up your team and all that, Mm -hmm. you have, and I don't know why they chose this number, 27 hours to get, to assemble your, um, balloon structure. 27. Yeah. Just like the James Franco movie. Yeah. (laughs) Seven hours. Yeah. And, but it's like nonstop. So once it starts 27 hours later, so if you have like a team of 27 people, you each get to work like an hour or, you know, team up, sleep, whatever. But I guess the, if it's just you, you have to work for 27 hours. Oh God. By yourself. (laughs) And I guess some people only have teams of like three. Oh wow. Wow. So, um, the Taiwan team I heard has 27 people. (laughs) So they were like, Oh, we got this. There's no limit on how big your team can be. Cause you think if, you know, you have a team of three and a team of 27 they're going to be able to create a much Uh, more elaborate structure right you have like substitutes you know like when someone wants to like tag team out and they can tag someone in (laughs) i guess as long as it's a team member you can you work out work it out with your team how you want to utilize your time wow Hmm. so i was like okay 27 hours is weird i wouldn't know why you wouldn't make it a whole 24 i don't know what the extra three hours is for it maybe for like filling up air and tying them off or something i don't know (laughs) is is there a prize there there isn't lettuce (laughs) (laughs) sorry that was the last episode (laughs) those snails there they didn't say there was like a cash prize or anything like that but i also don't know if they it didn't mention like a year supply of whatever balloons latex (laughs) and things so I don't know, but they're, I know they get their bragging rights because they take this stuff pretty seriously from the article that I read. Um, let me just tell you what first thing in a place one or their, their sculptures were. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> first place was the Taiwan team. They built a 15 foot tall tiger. Ooh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. There was 27 of them. So Yeah. I'm going to take a quick break and then I'll tell you what the other two second and third place um, sculptures were and how large they were. But they were pretty awesome. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast. We're going to continue our conversation on balloon art competition. Um, I left off on what the Taiwan team built for their first place first place prize. It was a tall tiger. Um, the second place team was Russia, and they built this massive wolf. It was pretty cool because it wasn't just like gray and black and white, mm-hmm. something like that. It had like purple and blue colors Ooh. thrown in there. It's and really it doesn't almost. Yeah. And it, it was, um, standing on all fours, just kind of, it looked like it would be, a, um, just out in the wild, mm-hmm. you know? So that was pretty cool. And then the Americans won third place. This is the first time they've ever won in, I don't know how long this has been going on, but the first time they've won 
and they built a big Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Oh, wow. And she was oh. huge. I think she, they said she was like around 20 feet or something oh, like wow. that. Wow. She was huge. Did they build frameworks first with the balloons on or is it just all balloons? Did did, did it, it say? No, it was all balloons. and then, But they got to use like helium and just plain air. Oh. So mm. they didn't really need... It had to be all balloons. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. So I'm always fascinated by people who can do that stuff. A few episodes ago, Stacey and I talked about a guy who makes basically mosaics out of Rubik's Cubes. So first he, he creates the side of the Rubik's Cube and then he puts them all together. How yeah. do you wow. begin to visualize that? Right. 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 Sketch it on a piece of paper. Yeah, or that's interesting first. that they can like visualize like what shape balloon needs to go where and like how to balance the helium balloons with just the regular air exactly. balloons to keep it like staying up but not like floating away. Right. It's just an artist thing. I don't have that artist eye. Definitely I don't not. either. Man, I definitely I have, don't have it for balloons. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Or even like the, the what are those, those um, the Rubik's Cube? The Rubik's Cube yeah. mosaics, yeah. The mosaics. I saw one where in a museum, I actually posted on my personal Instagram page, where um, you look at it at one angle and it's um, a picture of a handgun, mm-hmm. like a nine millimeter or something like that. But then you do a 90 degree and look at it at another angle and it's, the United States of America. Oh, oh wow. Geez. Like, yeah. Wow. But they're all different kind. They're, um, they're not Rubik's Cubes. They're guns mm. hanging oh, from wow. the city. Yeah. It, it was crazy. And I'm like, how do you? So you got one angle and then another angle, not just one big. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, wow. I, I don't have that kind of eye. It's awesome to look at, mm-hmm. but to make it. Yeah. Please don't ask me to like. <laughs> Right. This, my life ever depends on me creating that. I'm, I'm just, I'm in trouble. You know, just send me away. Okay. <laughs> just put me out of my misery. Aww. It's over. <laughs> right. Um, but the sad thing about the balloon art is these obviously don't fit on planes to take home with you for your prizes. So right. they pop all of them Aww. and just recycle the balloons. Oh, so God, they recycle it. But can't they leave them up until they just sort of deflate sadly? <laughs> They could. That's so sad. They could. It's a whole week um, oh, okay. it, uh, thing. So j- the judges will walk by after the 27 hours are up and the whole week um, they'll judge by, you know, I think it's detail, um, height, other things. But it was crazy. I was like, who has time for this? What happens if your half your balloons deflate because they're helium filled and then they're all like sad yeah. and limp and you know how your your balloons they end up right. like hovering mm-hmm. in the corner? Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why they only give them twenty seven hours because after that then but they if they're do up start for to... a week. Oh yeah, judging. Oh, you yeah, can like true. put something in balloons. It's called like stay float, where you spray uh, it into balloons and it makes them last longer. Okay, like helium. I'm I mean, sure I'm sure they. Tricks. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure they know all the balloon related tricks. Right. And then the structure would stay up, like, however they twist it and turn Mm -hmm, it, I guess, mm -hmm. for the, its own support, I guess. I don't know. Um, The Italian team, they they did uh, the Incredible Hulk this time. I was like, ooh, I would like to see that. I didn't get to see that one, but I I read about it. The lady that I was reading about, she, it was her, the American team that she put together, Mm -hmm. and she considers herself a balloon artist, like, as a profession Mm -hmm. that's what she does in her Mm -hmm. she's she was uh she made a comment that she her parents are like those parents (laughs) like drug parents when they're like you don't want to tell your friends that your kid sells drugs but they're like yeah she just works for large companies (laughs) (laughs) because i guess big corporations for their like holiday parties or corporate parties they hire she she does balloon art for their parties and oh, she yeah. says they pay like mil- not just, millions but thousands of dollars you yeah. say parents if you're if your kid's making a decent living yeah, yeah. i mean if it's legal yeah <laughs> exactly exactly I mean, her parents kid. are she she does yeah. corporate parties she's, she's staying afloat right <laughs> oh is that a balloon pun? <laughs> yes <laughs> i saw what you did there <laughs> No, but I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know if I I would like to just go see it. I yeah. wouldn't hang out. Yeah, that'd be cool. But balloon art is pretty cool. I like having the hats and the little swords and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. This next topic I have is super crazy. I don't well, I don't know if it's super crazy. I'm sure it's normal for some people, but it is a um mac and cheese fi- flavored candy cane. Have you guys? Oh jeez. Oh. Yeah. My 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 brother bought his then girlfriend a couple years ago uh dill pickle flavored candy cane oh no yeah and i don't know 
I don't Why? know. They, I just feel like candy canes should be peppermint. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Do That's they it. do they look like the peppermint kind or are they like a different color? No. They're yellow and light I would hope yellow. That they were. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I can sometimes be okay with a cinnamon flavor. But even then, but even, sometimes that's too much. Yeah. Because you can only Especially do so if you're much expecting and, mint. Yeah, right. And it's still yeah. red and white striped. Exactly. I was say, I'm really glad they changed the color because I don't want to like go in expecting a peppermint candy cane and then end up with like mac and cheese. Like, right. Very Boss every flavor beans. Oh, yeah. Candy. That's what they're called. Oh, oh Well, this, um, they come from this company called Archie McPhee. Um, they're based in Seattle. And they're just a novelty company of just random, weird... It's probably run by goats. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, the non-native mountain goats. <laughs> right. Would they sell everything? But they're, for their food and, like, treats um, on their website, it says that their slogan for that is comfort food that tastes like comfort food. <laughs> but if I want mac and cheese, I want mac and cheese. I don't want... Yeah. A hard candy that tastes like mac and cheese. Right. But and I if guess, I want a candy cane, I want a candy cane. Exactly. Like Although I guess it'd be fewer calories for a mac and cheese flavored candy cane. Yeah. Oh, maybe. It's just nasty to me. I wouldn't want to have a candy cane. I, it's visual for me. It's mm-hmm. visual yeah. because yeah. I'd be like, no, a candy cane is supposed to be candy. That's, you know, and right. then you taste yeah. mac and cheese. It's just gross. They have different kind of flavor candy canes too. Not just um, mac and cheese. They have pickle. Mm-hmm. Would you say it? I think they have bacon. Bacon, they do. Yeah. Rotisserie chicken. Oh. oh. Yeah, just nasty. And then one that's um, shellfish flavored. And Why? they call oh. it clamdy cane. Oh. <laughs> I was like, that just sounds so gross. Why? I just Why? feel like that would make me want to actually eat the food, though. You know, like right, if I'm just... eating something mac mac and cheese flavored, I want like macaroni and cheese. You know, yeah. like the actual like noodles and everything. I don't want something else that tastes like that. Right. Well, and it's still okay. So it's still a candy cane, which is basically taffy, right? That's sort of like yeah, kind, like, kind of, of hard something. Yeah, yeah. So I would assume it's still. 90% sugar or whatever candy canes are. But <laughs> right. Then it's, so you're, you're still getting the massive sugar and rotting your teeth, but it's mac and cheese flavor. I mean, it's just all it doesn't make weird sense. To me. Right. It doesn't make sense. Well, they, on their website, they said that the mac and cheese candy canes are a favorite from mm-hmm. the people who buy them just because, mm-hmm. especially around the holidays, because mac and cheese is kind of like a holiday tradition in most homes in, in America. Mm-hmm. So, um, how lazy do you have to be to just buy candy canes? You can't make a... I don't know, a thing of mac and cheese. It would better taste like homemade mac and cheese and not craft mac and cheese. Yeah. Oh, I know. Because <laughs> that would be even more it's disappointing. Even generic version of craft, too. Those are horrible. Dollar store when mac you, and yeah. cheese. No. <laughs> Just sure, some easy honey. mac. Oh, We're God. not cooking this year. We got a bunch of different flavored candy canes. Oh. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I know. <laughs> that reminds me of like Willy Wonka when he has the gum. Yes. That oh, kind of yeah. like is the... F- the yep. full meal. Mm-hmm. I mean, not that I want that. I really don't. Well, you definitely no. don't want to turn into a blueberry. No. Oh, no, not at all. Well, I was just at the um, old Sacramento, old sack town. Is that what they call it? Old, old town, town sack. sack. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I got that mixed up. But I was um, tasting taffies with my sister for uh, my daughter's treats for school for her birthday. But they had like the weird ones like peanut butter and jelly taffy and mm-hmm. hot chocolate taffy. But then they even had like. Those are so sweet. Yeah, the peanut butter and jelly one, I was not feeling it. It's just like, it, again, visual. I'm like, this should taste like sweet, chewy sugar. Right. <laughs> Why do you taste like peanut butter and jelly? I've had yeah. a chicken and waffles taffy before. Yeah, they had those there. Which did actually taste like, I mean, it tasted more like waffles and maple syrup, which was better. That's better. Okay, you know? yeah. But yeah, but it was weird. It was still. weird. Yeah, I don't think that, I'm not a fan of food that doesn't look like what it tastes have you yeah. ever have you ever done the bamboozled game with the Yeah. Well, I haven't done it, but my my daughter and her sister have done it. Yeah, yeah, my nieces did it and I watched cuz that's the kind of aunt I am. What is yes. <laughs> What is that game? So it's the different flavored jelly beans. Oh. And they yeah. have two of each they, two of kind. each like color, yeah, or, color. Or, or color scheme. They they look exactly alike, but right. one is one is um like if you had yellow and yellow, one would be like stinky socks and um popcorn. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. yeah. Or one, I think they have like a skunk flavored one. Oh, or yeah. Like black licorice, which I hate anyway, and then skunk. And oh, yeah. Like, it's so. And you, you spin the wheel mm-hmm. on, in the little game, and whatever color it lands on, you have to choose that color bean, and oh. you get what you get, basically. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. That sounds kind of fun. <laughs> 
I'm not that brave. <laughs> no. Yeah. Because if I get something that in my mouth that's just horrible, that would traumatize me for life. I, I have some great eat. pictures of my nieces like spitting things out. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. <laughs> that, yeah, that's a fun game to watch other people do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, oh, one more t- thing about this. Um, Archie McPhee's weird. Their top selling item is tinfoil hat and tinfoil hat for cats. <laughs> why okay this we maybe you should have started with that because that explains so much yeah <laughs> we know oh exactly gosh. what kind of company this is now yeah, that's the picture but of you want the, your cat to be safe too you know if you're gonna be safe you gotta see make sure your pets are too so wow I don't know. you never know who's reading your brain waves right you know? but how are you gonna really sell but and um they were like seven fifty eight ninety nine. i'm like a roll of foil I was by itself <laughs> You can make it a lot cheaper. I'm just saying, people. That's well, hilarious. Yeah. That's We're really going to take our last break and come back with um, some more weird news. Stay tuned. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast. Our last topic is a wedding proposal that went sadly wrong. Mm, no, um, no. Yeah. No. It wasn't too bad, okay? I, like, maybe over-exaggerate. Exaggerate. <laughs> that. But it will be a nice story to tell their children and their grandchildren. Anyway, this... This man, Joshua Mason, and his girlfriend, Katie Davis, they're both from Texas, they decided to go hike Jasper's Peak in Colorado. And I don't know, I'm sure the the um, altitude. altitude is different in, it has to be, Colorado's up there, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And um, then from what it is in Texas. Anyway, so they decided to hike this mount, this peak, and they made it up about eight miles which was roughly around 3,000 feet. Um, the whole summit or the, the whole Jasper's Peak is around 13,000 feet. Mm-hmm. So they made it, you know, a good ways up. Um, anyway, the guy, Josh, was Joshua. I don't know what he wants to be called. <laughs> <laughs> they, he, they got up to that height and he was kind of scoping the area looking for, uh, you know, good sunset, good, you know, where you can see the city, good mm-hmm, view, mm-hmm. Um, and also like a peaceful place like in the um, hike area. Well, anyway, he found a good scenic area. He proposed. Um, she said yes. It was cute. And they kind of hung out for a little bit too long because then it started getting dark and they lost their track oh, or no. their trail. No. And Aww. they could not find their way back. They were like wandering about and... I don't know if anybody knows about Colorado or any of that. This just happened this past Saturday. And they, um, it starts to get colder at night, yes, especially right. in Colorado. And they did not prepare for like warm clothes or anything like oh, that, no. or even staying up there mm-hmm. that long. Um, so they were trying to find their way back. But luckily, uh, a man found them who, him and his group of friends, were uh, camping nearby were Mm -hmm. probably near where they got lost Mm -hmm. or something like that so when he found them he said that he noticed that they looked like they were have had signs of altitude sickness Mm -hmm. so they were super dehydrated and um what else comes with altitude sickness like lightheadedness yeah they were a little nausea um, not a lot of those right. types of things, yeah. Not all the way there. But anyway, he brought them back to his camp, fed them, uh, gave them water. Oh, a nice. couple of his um, friends, like, they let him warm up in their tents. But one woman was so concerned that she just walked down to where she had parked her truck and drove down and found a... Um, what is... Are they... Like um, a ranger like station? A ranger, yeah, rescue yeah. rangers. Um, and 
told them like look we we have a couple up here they they're not really fully prepared we just found them they were a little lost but they didn't get a rescue team up there until around 4 30 in the morning mm. which, oh. which i i mean i don't know if you have to call that in or right. anything like right. that but by the time the rescue team arrived they were pretty well recovered mm-hmm. um the little friends group took pretty good care of them you know helped them out kept right. them um okay because you, i mean if you're camping up there you got to know what you're doing yeah you oh, for sure yeah. i don't camp so i wouldn't know <laughs> <laughs> i I worked uh, at a summer camp for two summers in Montana, and base camp was at 6,000 feet. Oh, and then, wow. Then we would hike and do other things, and you'd get kids from... We had a lot of kids from Minnesota that came, and oh. Minnesota is not at 6,000 feet, so <laughs> right. it, we, had, we, had, we had to be very careful because right. we'd get these kids, and they'd go hiking, and they weren't used to... The altitude? Uh, yeah, they weren't even used to the altitude at base camp. So. Oh, Wow. Mm. That yeah, and that's kind of scary, especially with kids too that you're responsible for. Yeah, yeah, for yeah sure, so, pretty much. Yeah, and it takes a while to like acclimate to that. Like, it does elevation, especially if they're like from Texas. They don't know the weather. They don't know the area. Mm-hmm. Right. They don't know what to expect. And it's not just going up; it's coming down too. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. from Utah, and they're at like two thousand twenty five hundred or three thousand feet. And here we're like at twenty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In that California, it's very yeah. different. Yeah. So coming down, I'm like, what is this fresh air? <laughs> I, when That's I so first, fresh. When I first moved to California, I used to laugh because you, as you're driving, you'll see um, X city population four thousand and six elevation two yeah. <laughs> or something like that. You know, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, threw me off. I saw one that said elevation eleven, and yeah. I was like. What? Is, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it's not in triple digits. It's not supposed to be. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. but um, the the couple they were they ended up being okay. Um, I just thought it was kind of a it's a crazy story, but it's to me it's one of those ones that you can laugh at later. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know to tell your kids, oh, how did you how did yeah. you guys get the, all that done? And you know, I think it's cute at the end of the day, not like the whole. You know, getting lost and you know, possibly almost dying of altitude sickness. But um, although I bet they uh, they now have a really good understanding of how they react in crisis. That's, that's good <laughs> yeah. premarital story. counseling. Exactly. Yeah. Some exactly. good bonding. <laughs> One of them just, you know what, honey, you're on your own. I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Find your own. Way they back. stuck together. Exactly. I take back that proposal. <laughs> right. I, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. They they both survived, and hopefully the relationship is stronger. It yeah. should be. It should be. <laughs> Definitely, uh, um, what is that? One of those trial things. Oh, yeah. Uh, relationship oh, for sure. trials. Um, mm-hmm. But that was a nice story. I liked it. Um, the couple is fine. They'll be just fine. Um, and it'll be a nice story to tell. Um, on the last topic I wanted to bring up before we go, October 4th is National Vodka Day. I don't know if anybody knew that, but, you know, <laughs> cheers to know. that. I don't drink vodka and GSMC does not promote or encourage drinking. Just, just to <laughs> let you guys know. But if you choose to, you know, cheers anyway. And, um, oh, quick fact on that vodka is the slavic word for little water did you guys know that i did oh. not know that i did not know that either that i don't even know like what little water little means. water you know it's it like very powerful water yeah maybe yeah. you only a drink a little swig. bit at a time i don't know mm-hmm. yeah but um i thought that was a fun little fact um be safe if you're going to be out there drinking vodka on Thursday today. Yeah. <laughs> so, don't drink vodka and drive. Don't drink no. and drive. But no. Especially, no. Yeah. Stay home. Cheers yeah. to yourself and then just go to sleep. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> until next time, thanks for listening to the GSMC Weird News Podcast. Bye, guys.